is time-lapse photography and how you can set your camera to do a time-lapse. Let's talk a little bit about it. Hello everybody, my name is Attila Mate from Blue Sky Photography and today I'd like to talk to you about time-lapse photography. What is time-lapse photography and uh, how you can set your camera to do uh, a good time-lapse? Now I have to tell you that uh, this is a very very interesting type of photography and uh, in, the, uh, in the past it used to be much more difficult than these days, you know, especially in the Nikon D7200 and all the modern cameras, DSLRs and even mirrorless, they will have this time-lapse uh, function. So you, what you have to do is you just have to set up your camera, you know, on a tripod and, and you have to set in the menu, you know, your camera, how to, uh, how to uh, uh, achieve, you know, the, the time-lapse you want to achieve. And we will talk about this, you know. So um, first of all, uh, what is time-lapse? Time-lapse is, a, is a, a series of JPEG images uh, merged together like a video. So it will look like a, a video which is a, a speeded up kind of. You will, you will speed up the time, you know, that, that's how it looks like. So um, it is very interesting and it is very, very appealing to your eyes if you, if you can uh, do a good one. So um, let's see in the camera how you set up your camera and, uh, and let's see some, uh, some examples that I, I've shot, you know, just recently not too long ago. So first of all, let's go in the camera's menu and let's see how uh, we set up our camera, you know, and then we see the examples. So we are in the Nikon D7200's menu and uh, you have to go down to the, to the third menu point where is the movie shooting menu. And you get into the movie shooting menu and then you will have to go down until you find at the very bottom the last item is time-lapse photography. Now you will have a few um, menu items here. The first one is the start, that is obviously the, to start the time-lapse. And the second is the interval. Now if you go to the interval section, you will find here uh, that you can set uh, the interval in between the shots. So the camera will, uh, will make every, each and every picture at the interval that you set over here. So at the moment, as you can see over here, is at the five seconds. So in each and every five seconds, the camera will make a photo. You can set this on a lower or on a higher uh, number. So you can set four seconds or eight seconds or 10 seconds. Now you have to be careful here because you must be um, aware that with the settings you, you enter in here, what kind of effect you will get. Now you have to, uh, uh, to know the concept of, of time-lapse and uh, that is if you set the example uh, a faster uh, 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 interval, the example a three seconds interval, that means the interval between the, the shots will be smaller and then the movement in the, sh in the shots it will be actually uh, 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 slower. So uh, as, as uh, you will see in, in the video, you know, I will make a, a small window in, in my screen so you can see an example time lapse and you will see that the clouds are moving. So if you set a short interval like, like three seconds or two seconds, then the clouds will move slower because the interval between the shots is, is uh, uh, less. If you set a higher interval, like an 8 second or 9 second interval, the clouds will move faster or any, any movement in, in your time lapse will move faster. So you have to be aware and you have to, uh, you have to uh, exercise a little bit and you have to, uh, to, to know what kind of settings you, you enter in here. But what I would suggest, I would suggest you to start with five seconds. That is kind of a, a good mid-range, you know, and then you can just exercise and, and learn, you know, about this. So the, <clears throat> the next menu item is the shooting time. Now you, you have to, uh, to know again over here that my camera is set at 25 minutes. You can set on hours, the example when you shoot stars, you know, in the night, you can set on hours or, or even, even more, two, three, four hours. But uh, it depends how long you want your time-lapse. Now you have to know here that in one minute, 
according to how many seconds you set, you know, in your uh, in your interval. It, 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 if uh, we set five seconds, it means that in one minute our camera will make 12 pictures. So a 25 uh, a minute of shooting time will end up in approximately a 10 seconds uh, a time lapse. So if you want a 20 seconds time lapse, then you have to put in here in the shooting time one hour or so. I, this is maybe not uh, very precise, but you, it's something like that. So you, you, can, you can exercise and you can see, you know, what's the result. So uh, <clears throat> that's the shooting time. Now, if we go back here, exposure smoothing. Now, I would like this if you would turn it on. And I tell you why. Because Nikon D7200 has a very specific uh, uh, mode, you know, in, in time lapse. And this is the exposure smoothing. Some of the cameras, they don't have this, and it's much more difficult for, uh, for the camera, you know, to. Uh, um, uh, to blend the time lapse because the example if you if you shoot a, a sunset or a sunrise the exposure in your in your uh, pictures you know as as you go uh, uh, over and over on the sunset you know you you will see that the exposure is changing so what Nikon D7200 will do it will smooth the the changings of the exposure so you will see a nice and and uh, and a faded you know uh, uh, sunset or sunrise you know it's not like jumping from one exposure to another it will smooth like you will see very very uh, 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 nicely fading away you know or, or coming up you know, when the sun is coming up the example you know or when it's going down so that's the that's the exposure smoothing I will I will suggest you to leave that definitely always on on you never turn that off. Only if you want to do some uh, artistic effect or something, then you can turn it off. But most of the time, you should uh, you should leave it on. That's what I uh, I would suggest. So that's all what uh, what we have over here with the Nikon D7200 in the menu. So this is how you set uh, the Nikon D7200 on a time lapse. It's uh, it's nothing uh, really difficult. I mean, it's uh, it's easy enough. You know, you just have to know a few things, and you have to keep in mind a few aspects. You know, and how you set. But the best way is to exercise as much as possible. You know, and you just uh, learn in time. You know, when when you do one, two, three, four, five, you will know that your time lapses will be better and better. Now I will uh, uh, I will show you some uh, some accessories. You know what you can. Uh, what you can find on eBay, the example, and what you would need for the time lapse. Now that uh, uh, one of them, the example, is the on the tripod head, on the tripod actually, you can mount a, a special uh, rotating device, you know, which will, which will rotate your your camera in angle. I will show you in my in my computer. One second. So we are in my computer now and uh, uh, I will show you on eBay some uh, some stuff you can buy you know uh, for for your time-lapse photography now these are not uh, necessary for your time-lapse but it will give you uh, a nicer look you know and a much more professional look to your time-lapse now first and the most important it would be for you is the uh, rotating time-lapse timer now you can find from this, this is, you see, it's not too expensive. It's about 25 euro plus postage. So it will be like 26, 27 euro, you know, and, and this is um, um, a timer, which is actually a mechanical timer. So it's like a, it's like an old clock, you know, you just pull up and then it will go slowly, slowly. It will turn around and it, as you can see over here, it will turn around in 360 degrees. Now this is only uh, only the cheaper one. You can find uh, also from uh, these kind of timers, you know, electric timers with digital uh, uh, screen and digital, uh, so electric electrically moved. You know, it's not mechanically moved. But that's uh, obviously more expensive than this one. But definitely this one will do the job as well, no problem. You can see over here is the the electric timer what I was talking about. And this is uh, 80 euro plus 11 euro postage, so it's almost 100 euro. So it's up to you if you want to spend money on the electric timer or you want to spend money only on the menu on the mechanical timer. I would say the mechanical timer is uh, is uh, 
the same good, you know, it's, it's just a cheaper version. Now, the second uh, thing, if you, if you don't have in your camera incorporated time-lapse function, the second thing you might want to, to buy is the time-lapse intervalometer remote timer shutter. Now for this, this obviously you see this is for Canon, you know, but you can, fi you can find also for Nikon and, and Sony and all kind of brands, you know. Uh, what this does is that you can set your intervals the same like we set in our camera. And then uh, this will uh, trigger the camera, you know, the shutter. So it will make the picture in every five seconds for the time, uh, uh, how much you set in there. So actually, uh, this is only you need if you don't have in the camera. But if you have the Nikon D7200, then you will have in the camera. And many other cameras will have. You just have to search in the menu and you see if you have incorporated in the camera's menu this type of uh, uh, shooting. So that's all for, for today and for, uh, for the time-lapse photography. If you have some questions or if you don't understand something, you know, uh, please leave a comment down below and I will try my best to answer your questions. Uh, obviously, the biggest point is to uh, exercise a lot, you know, and then if you exercise a lot, then you will learn a lot, you know. That's the, the main point in photography, in, in, in any part of the photography, you know. You can, you can, um, you can learn only uh, theoretically, but the best way of learning is, is actually practically. So if you go out and start shooting. But uh, like I told you, I will put up here, you know, in a small screen, two, uh, um, uh, two small videos where you, uh, I just made for this purpose, you know, and you will see in one of the videos, I will make a sign, you know, where I did the, the panning for the time lapse. Sorry, not the panning, the rotating. I did the rotating manually. So if you don't want or if you don't have uh, the, the, uh, the, this device, you know, what you can buy on eBay for rotation, you know, rotating the camera, then you can do it manually as well. But it's obviously difficult and you have to take care Then after each and every shot, you know, you turn a little bit the camera. Now you will see um, uh, in that in that uh, video in that small video that in one stage the, the 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 picture is jumping like that you know it's and that is when I I uh, I rotated the camera after every third and fourth shot now if you do it after each and every shot you rotate a little bit the camera then the the turning will be smooth so you don't see these jumps in it you know. So where you see that jump in it, you know, in the video, there you can see that I rotated after, after every three shots, I rotated. You can exercise yourself and just to, just to learn the concept of the time lapse and how it's working. So you will understand much better. So that's what you will see up there in the small, uh, in the small video, in the small screen. So I hope this video was helpful to you guys and I hope that you liked it. If you liked it, please like and subscribe and uh, share my videos so as many people as possible can see and i wish you a nice day and i see you in the next one take care guys